It's almost Easter and I thought we should indulge in making some chocolate covered almond butter eggs. Now you can use peanut butter if you like or even cashew butter, it all works. These are easy to make, you don't even need a mold to make them. I'm gonna be using just my hands and a spoon to form these into a nice shape. They don't have to be perfect, they just have to taste good. And I'm also gonna be cutting out the sugar in these, at least in the filling. The chocolate does have sugar depending on what brand you use, but the filling in this, I'm gonna be subbing in some maple syrup. These will need to be stored in the refrigerator or the freezer, and all you need to do is just take them out when you're ready to serve them. If you leave them out at room temperature for too long, they tend to get a little bit too soft. So I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after our chef joke. All right, so here's chef joke number one. We'll have number two a little bit later. So what crime is an egg most afraid of? Poaching. So I placed my almond butter here in a bowl, and this is a natural almond butter that I got from Costco, and it only has almonds and salt in it, so you gotta love those natural ingredients. To that, I'm gonna add some cream cheese, and I'm gonna blend that up with a hand mixer until it's nice and creamy and smooth. Next, I'm gonna add some coconut flour to this, and what that's gonna do is gonna thicken up our mixture quite a bit and make it easier for us to form our little eggs. Now, our sweetener that we're adding is maple syrup, which I mentioned earlier, and you can play with this depending on how sweet you want it. I like to start with about three teaspoons and then add more by the teaspoonful. And so sometimes, you know, I'll add usually around a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a teaspoon. But feel free to make it as sweet as you like. Now we'll take our dough and with clean hands, of course, you take a little piece and you just want to shape it into, I'd start out with sort of like a shape of a, an oval. And then I like to use a teaspoon because I don't want these to be too large. I mean, you could use a tablespoon if you're feeling like you want jumbo size. And I just place it on there and kind of just form it into the shape of my teaspoon. And it really looks like a nice little oval egg. And then I'll place those onto a parchment paper covered uh, baking sheet until I get them all formed. And then we're gonna place them in the freezer for about 30 minutes or until they're firmed up enough so that they hold their shape when we dip them in chocolate. I got 14 little eggs out of our little batter mixture and they're in the freezer now, like I said, for about 20 minutes. And now it's time for chef joke number two. You ready? <laughs> All right, here we go. How does a hen leave the house? Through the exit. <laughs> if you're enjoying this video, let me know by smashing the like button. All right, just give it a good old smash and uh, that, that really helps me out it's time to start getting our chocolate ready to dip our eggs into. So first of all, let's talk about our chocolate. So I'm gonna be using Guitar chocolate chips. Feel free to use whatever you like, whatever your favorite is. I like these because, well, I just love the, their chocolate and it's also gluten-free. I use, sometimes use semi-sweet chocolate, sometimes I use milk chocolate. It just depends on my mood and sometimes I use a combination of both. You're also gonna to wanna to use some sort of device to melt your chocolate. Some people like to use the microwave. I tend to use double boiler in most cases or you could use just a pot like this, place a bowl into it, you simmer some water in the pot, and then just stir your chocolate chips until they're melted. You just wanna make sure that the water does not touch the bottom of the dish or the bowl that you have the chocolate chips in because you don't want it to burn or seize up. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to use is some sort of tool to dip your chocolates in because the chocolate's hot. So I like to recommend either a couple of forks, a couple of spoons, or even some toothpicks will work. Or you can use a combination thereof, whatever works for you. So try them out and see what works best. So I'm gonna place my chocolate chips into my double boiler over very low heat. Now once the chips completely melt, then we'll start our dipping. So we'll just take an egg and drop it right in the hot chocolate. And I'm gonna use a couple of forks and I'm just gonna turn it over a couple times to coat the whole thing. And then I'll place it on my tray. Now this time I'm gonna try the toothpick method and see how that works. I found that I have the best control with using two forks as opposed to the toothpicks or even the spoons are okay, but the forks allow the chocolate to drain off which made it a little easier.
And if your eggs have a little hole in them from the fork or the toothpick, you can always take a spoonful of chocolate and just cover them up and it makes it look pretty. So at one point my chocolate seized up, as you can see it is here, very thick. And so what you want to do is take about two or three teaspoons of coconut oil and use it to thin it up. Once the chocolate is thinned back down, then you can resume your chocolate dipping. Here are our eggs after they've all been covered in chocolate. I think they turned out pretty good. Now we'll place this tray back in the freezer until they firm up. Here are the eggs after about 20 minutes of being in the freezer, so they're ready to, to eat. All right, let me take one of these and cut it for you so you can see what it looks like on the inside. I love the goutard milk chocolate chips on this and the cream cheese in the filling adds just a little bit of something special. Uh, I think you're really gonna love these. Now, if you love chocolate, you're gonna wanna check out my gluten-free chocolate cake here. It is so good, it is moist, it is decadent, it is just delicious. Thank you for watching and don't forget to share the video and let me know if you have any recipe requests, leave them down below in the comments. We'll see you next time, take care.